God stays very close to us for encouraging our spiritual progress and elevating our souls. To know about our true existence, to have more answers on spirituality and God, let's learn from our esteemed guests. Let's have a panel discussion on the topic, Spirituality and God. In the panel, we have with us Ms. Amra Kubert. She's graduated from the Faculty of Economics in Sarajevo, majoring in marketing, and she attended various training seminars on recreational sports, rehabilitation, and personal development. She's registered yoga teacher with Yoga Alliance. She teaches Reiki methods of natural healing, yoga, and meditation. She passes a passion and the great joy to her students while practicing and living yoga. This is a mission and she feels rewarded while teaching and learning with her students. Our next guest, Ms. Amrita Magdala, whose love for nature and for Gaia, the earth and humanity represents, has moved Amrita into the exploration of consciousness. A journey that ongoingly opened towards unrealized possibilities normally unimaginable to our current state of realization. Creating unity is finding love as the thread that unites all traditions, all relations, all beings on the earth. As the expression of her soul, she helps now the arising awareness through the arts in the form of music and art. Founder of The Voice of Gaia, a movement rising consciousness through music and art, inspiring love for Mother Earth and humanity. Our next panelist is Mr. Iger Onashchenko, CEO and founder of one of the leading construction company in Belarus. He spent 27 years in heartfulness meditation. Group of heartfulness meditation organized by Day of Yoga starting from 2015. On behalf of United Consciousness, I welcome our next guest, Mr. Christoph Stig. He is a Polish citizen. He is doctorate in physical education and sports sciences and has been employed as an assistant professor at Jen Dulugos University, Czestakowa in Poland since 2012. Earlier in his life, he worked for 20 years in various states in the United States. In the last 15 years, he was in Silicon Valley where he was employed as a senior software analyst in different companies known worldwide for introducing breakthrough technologies. He has been practicing yoga for about 40 years as detailed in an interview he gave to Yoga International magazine published in January 2006 issue. Under the title Yoga Behind the Iron Curtain, he has been to India more than 30 times. He has spent 10 years in India, where there he obtained two academic qualifications, graduating with a diploma in yoga education from Kevala Vyadhama Institute and a master's degree in physical education from the Banaras Hindu University in Varanasi. Today's panel discussion will be moderated by Dr. Vikrant Singh Tober. Convenia United Consciousness, Dr. Tomer is an acknowledged trainer, academician, scholar, writer and a management consultant. He is a freelance trainer and served the cabinet ministers of state, MLAs, police, MLA, officers, police and officers and titles of the business, of the business world. world. His aim and objective His is universal objective brotherhood, universal and, brotherhood happiness and happiness through harmonizing the knowledge from the ancient scriptures into our lives. So I welcome all our guests for panel discussion. Namaste. Welcome, friends. We acknowledge your presence, Amraji. We acknowledge your presence, dear Christoph Ji. Amrita Ji, Namaste. Aigar Ji, Namaste. Namaste, Dr. Vikram. Namaste. And uh, we welcome and acknowledge the presence of our honorable audience from different parts of the world. Friend, this event has also been supported by G20 and Civil 20 India. So I'm sure that people from different parts of the world will be benefited by the panel discussion today on spirituality and God. Even I'm looking forward to learn and listen from our experts here. So first question that obviously comes to the mind and is coming to the mind of many of our audiences. Who is God? So I know it's, it's a big question. And in, in Sanskrit, they call it Ati Prashna, the question which is more than a question itself. So may I request Christoph Ji to ignite the candle. 
And the first question goes to you, Christoph Ji. <laughs> Who is God? Uh, well, uh, can you hear me well? Uh, yeah. Hopefully, yes. All right. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, so many sages and rishis, yogis, and all others try to express uh, properly uh, in words who is God. And perhaps uh, the statement from uh, Patanjali Gasutras, uh, Satchit Ananda, that the uh, best words in human language which um, uh, brings some um, understanding who really God is. But I know that for most people, at least when I was beginning in yoga, um, I was really searching for, for an experience of God because we can spend volumes uh, talking about God and it will not bring us any closer. As you can know from the introduction, I am in a very practical science of physical education so um, connecting really psychosomatic aspects of, of a human being. So how to, how to move from the known, what is known to us, it means from the growth level to the more subtle level, um, uh, more psychic level. And through the grace of God, uh, I was able to meet along the way amazing uh, beings, human beings, but more godlike beings, um, uh, men of power in India. It happened in India, and since that time I fell in love with India. And I went through, you know, Kaivalya Dam through very regular, rigorous uh, academic education later on through through Banaras Hindu University, but uh, truly, really the men of God, what I would call them, or the great yogis, people who had the inner experience of, of, of what we call God, uh, could bring me much, much closer. And it was definitely uh, an inner experience which is so hard to express. It was an experience of absolutely total bliss. I remember my first samadhi as I experienced in London, near London in England in 1972, as I was listening to uh, Ravi Shankar, Sri Ravi Shankar, a great musician, a sitar player. And it was a, a raga, meditational raga, which would last about an hour and a half. Uh, excuse me, only half an hour. And uh, I fell in love. It was the first time um, after leaving uh, communist Poland at that time, 72, as I was able to uh, experience the uniqueness of Indian music, uniqueness of Indian uh, sounds, sit uh, instruments like sitar. And I never forget the experience mm -hmm. as, as I was... Uh, um feeling actually i wasn't listening to music i became the music and every uh, cell of my body uh, as we have myriad of cells in our body it was dancing in utmost <laughs> joy to to that uh, amazing feeling so that was so that was the experience uh. that was god <laughs> Um, for me. That is my interpretation. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Thank Christoph. You. And I understand I asked you a difficult question and he said that God is such an ananda experience where every cell of the body starts dancing and then you feel probably you have, you have relatively approached towards God from gross to subtle. He also mentioned that it's an inner experience. Yes, I understand this, that it is difficult to define as somebody said, defining God is defying God. So let me ask Amrita Ji. Amrita Ji, uh, in quick remarks, you have worked in nature. What is God? And let me add one more question. Where is God? Well, dear Dr. Bikram, thank you for having us all here. Um, I never asked this question. <laughs> I, the only question, the only question I asked once, and it was suggested, and I, I thought, why not? Is who am I? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I just sat and I asked, um, I asked, who am I? And it was beautiful what happened uh, because I truly, um, honestly, I, I asked myself, I want to ask this question, but I don't want to make anything up. So I really asked myself to just sit with it, open to it and see what happens, but don't make anything up. I wanted it to be real, the answer. And what happened was incredible because um, it continues to this day. It's uh, It continues answering itself. It's an ongoing answer. And um, what happened, it was like, I felt I was not separate from the question. <laughs> the sensation was that the answer, it's everything and we are part of that answer. So to where I would say, uh, to who I would say, um, is the who separate from the it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Or from the that. And from the from the where, if the that and the who are not separate, or you don't find a separateness or a specific answer to that, then the where dissolves itself. Because then mm -hmm. there's no limitation to where. <laughs> Nice. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful exploration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. So Amrita ji mentioned that uh, for me, who is God, is the question, who am I? And uh, when I inquired into it, I found no separation, and I found that uh, this question belongs to me, and it belongs to God because there is no separation between me and God. And this is what where the exploration leads us to. Now we have Igarji also. Let me add one more facet to the question. I asked Christoph Ji, who is God? And uh, I asked Amrita Ji, what is God? And now I'm asking you, where is God? <laughs> <laughs> With each question, Dr. Vikramji, dear friends, it's becoming more and more interesting and more and more going is a deepness. It's, for me, it's uh, quite obvious uh, that God is only in the heart. It's in every cell of our body and uh, the most important place where he's residing is the heart. And from the heart, it's going everything what is belongs to God and what makes us also belongs to him. And uh, only through the heart we can come with some unity with him. Only through the love and heart, it's the way to feel him. It's the way to find him. Because we can speak along and like uh, Mr. Christoph said, only through experience we can know. It's not that somebody will tell who is God and so on, and uh, another person will understand. Never, never happens in life. Only the interest can come. Only some interest can come in the mind who is God, where he is, and only myself, only person himself can find the way, can find the God mm -hmm. through practice, through different practices, through meditation, through yoga, through his life, through his service, and there is no other possibility. And, uh, so Aigarji mentioned that, God, I asked him, where is God? He said, he's, God is here. He said, uh, every cell of our body God, is resonated by God. So now, friends, if you could notice, none of our experts mention any male or female God. None of our mention any God with a physical body or a person sitting somewhere managing the show. They said that God is here within us. Then the question comes automatically to Amraji is this. If God is this, what has been defined by our honorable guests here. Why more and more people in the world are being a beast? 
Because if God resides in their own cell, in the heart, and if God is everywhere, then why people are being atheists? Don't, don't they believe in what they don't believe in? So what is your reflection? You have been teaching hundreds of youth, thousands of people. So why number of growing population of atheists are there in the world? Oh, well, uh, Dr. Vikranji, very good question. <laughs> um, well, uh, by my experience uh, with the people, uh, usually uh, in my country, actually, it's a problem because uh, people are not satisfied with the religion views, with the religion uh, rules. Uh, because some religions are very dogmatic, uh, with strict rules, with the many punishment options uh, in the rules, uh, if the rules are not followed. Uh, but modern uh, man needs more than that. Uh, needs purpose of life, needs happiness and the joy, um, uh, needs more without fear of punishment, without, uh, uh, needs a life without uh, fear of punishment. So I think uh, it is uh, one of the main reasons why the number of atheists uh, is growing today. Uh, when, uh, usually when they try uh, yoga, they change <laughs> so they start to be a taste. <laughs> so I think yoga is a very good option <laughs> to be closer uh, to God. Nice. So she said that uh, probably people are not refusing the God. They are refusing a dogmatic concept of God that has yes. been given to them by religious rules. And she said that more and more people now don't approve of a ringmaster God ready to punish you, ready with the rules and regulations like a headmaster of a school. They want something which can help them in knowing their purpose of life, bring joy to the life and some significance to it. And for that, if this is the definition of God, more and more people will start believing in the God. And the one of the ways... Yoga and spiritualism. So, I'll again ask Christoph Ji. Christoph Ji, spirituality and God, are they same or different? Let me, let well, me be more specific. Can I be yes. spiritual without believing in God? Uh, you know, this is one of the problems why uh, more and more people are turning away from uh, religion. Um, and spirituality because in the past I believe uh, religiare the, the Roman word religiare is meant pretty much uh, what we say about yoga Does not, uh, that means uh, connect something with something connect uh, human with something divine so, so in other words there is that word union like one of the meanings of yoga is union. And uh, nowadays, uh, you will see uh, that spirituality is further and further away from uh, religion because uh, religion has become too much of a political uh, kind of uh, approach to life. People don't search for divine experiences in religion anymore. They are looking for that in spirituality. Uh, why so many young people, you know, they, they have the right instinct. They are trying to find something deeper. Joseph Chilton Pierce uh, in The Bond of Power, fantastic book, recommend anyone to read it. He um, analyzed things and he said beautifully that at the age of 18 to, to you know, 20 some years, we are we should experience something momentous, something divine, and everybody's looking for that. And yet the society is not um, allowing people. They, they don't recommend, you know, uh, any, any definite route. So basically so many young people, they are searching for that in drugs, narcotics, you know, in all kinds of wrong ways, instead of uh, trying to to find and look within 
our modern culture is without. Look outside. And, you know, God is to be found within. Someone said earlier, it is to be search eager, I think. Search in the heart. But what mm -hmm. heart? Which heart? The physical heart? Emotional heart? Which heart? And beautifully, uh, Ramana Maharishi, I'm sure you all know, or Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, great masters uh, that I was able to meet, Nisargadatta Maharaj, he was so clear about it. You look within, and a little effort is needed. Most people, they like to get something for nothing. That's where the problem is, something for nothing. And here we need to do, but someone mentioned also this fantastic uh, method of Advaita Vedanta. Who am I? Who am I? Do you know how potent this simple method is? You, in fact, don't need anything else. Just sit on your butt for two weeks, two weeks alone. At the same time, maybe from 7, 7.30, so you don't get up too early, you know, in Brahma Muhurta. So you get your sleep, but get your mind tied up to the search, real search. I invite everyone to the journey. <laughs> so Krishnaji said that let the uh, religion be there for the politicians and let the spirituality be there for the people. Because religion has become more uh, now there's politicized. And he said it's uh, it's a within journey and the journey is within the heart. And uh, he also mentioned the physical heart or the emotional heart because the definitions are different. As they say, you should have a big heart. But ask a medical doctor, he said big heart is a disease. So <laughs> if your heart becomes big. <laughs> so that's nicely said, Christoph Ji. And he also mentioned about who am I, self-inquiry of Raman Maharshi, and many of the uh, great masters mentioned about. So, Amrita ji, you also mentioned that you started your inquiry with uh, who am I. So, if somebody does not believe in God at all, will this inquiry help that person? I say I am an atheist, I don't believe in God. Should I still go with this inquiry of who am I? Well, in the moment that I asked this question, I was not a believer. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was really angry at life. <laughs> in fact, I, I found out I was only angry at myself. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask anything honestly, and you open to understand that everybody, all, all truths are out there. You just need to become a scientist in a way, an experimenter. I really ask life if, if life is consciousness, because, okay, we come from the Christian, we can say, they tell us, the knowledge is out there. They tell us everything is God. So if everything is God is everyone and his soul and is in all of us, it must be in you too. It must be everywhere. So it must be that then we go to the Hindus that they say all is Brahma, right? So then it all relates to a principle. And in that principle, again, is the inherent quality that it's everywhere. And it's an inherent quality that must be inside of you. And inherit means it has power on its own. You don't need to give it power to. So you ask really sincerely and wait enough have patience in the answers, observe. Really, this is so super important. Contemplate, become a contemplator of how life is answering you and contemplate mm -hmm. on these answers, which is the happenings in your life. You get all the answers. Anyone then can become this because if you are not as spiritual, you might be more open to be scientific. So, so it all is Thing. <laughs> what, in, in one line, what answer did you get out of your self-inquiry on who am I? In one line, what answer did you get, finally? What do you mean, what answer? Uh, you said that you also started inquiring inside yourself that, that who am I? So finally, which, what answer do you get? The answer was that it's still going on. The only okay. answer I can summarize this is that I'm alive. <laughs> 
I am alive or I am life? Both is the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we have Igor Ji and uh, Amrita Ji mentioned that even if you are angry, that can be a good trigger. Because even Bhagavad Gita starts with Vishada Yoga when you are upset. And when things are not going your way, probably you may go for the deeper meanings of life. He said, she said, be a spiritual scientist, be a spiritual experimenter, and be honest and open in this self-inquiry. Igorji, Igorji, when we start this self-inquiry, and the audience who are watching us from different parts of the world, what actionable tips would you like to give to our audience here? Because you said that God is in my heart. It is in every cell of my body. How to feel this actually? How to realize this? How to feel? How to experience as Christoph Ji said? What are the executionable tips that people can start doing from now? First of all, it to start any practice. It can be it can be heartfulness practice. It can be yoga. It can be any way. Because if you have somebody who is leading you, who is helping you, uh, then you can find the way more quickly. First of all, to be open and to be very receptive to all what you get from inside. If you ask yourself, your heart, if you ask God, please show me, explain me, in any way, answer will be coming. We have to just to listen. It answer will be coming, I don't know, from where, from broadcast, from radio, somewhere, from the people. God who is inside always finds the answer from the gods who are outside. We are all connected. We are all helping to each other. And just go on the way and answer will come. And do any practice. Meditation is, uh, I think, the best way. Yoga is bringing you even deeper. Any religion, you speak that religion is more political, but if you go with open heart, if you go to the people who are really in this um, religion, sages, if you pray to them, you feel connection. They are still there. They are not disappeared. Life is going on, and all the heritage, what was created, it's Everything is there. We are supported. But we are happy to be here and to, to get the support from all the sages, from all the ages also. From We are really so much love and care is given to us. Mm -hmm. And even here, Dr. Vikranji, even here it's also the same care given to everybody who is interested in some, so in some so way. Yes. So amazing points Igerji mentioned and he said start practicing but he said as a foundation be open, be receptive and listen. Whenever you ask questions, universe start answering it to you and he said that you may like to practice heartfulness, yoga but better to search for a master the journey will be relatively easy. He also mentioned meditation and one thing which I especially liked he said that when God inside you asks questions God I, outside you will also contribute in providing you the answers. And it reminds me of what Rumi said once, that your approach towards me is actually my approach towards you. So when we approach towards God, God also approach towards us. And when we say uh, this, this God's around, start contributing and making me realize the things. And, and so, Dr. Vikramji, you, if I can say you are not saying the full truth, about this, if you approach it, you have to state it much stronger. You make one step towards God, and He makes ten steps towards you. That's the rule. So, 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 so Christoph Ji said that the, the speed is faster than you can imagine, even one step towards my side will yield ten steps. So, now let me come back to Amraji. Amraji, quick tips to our audience. What should I do to realize the God within? Uh, well, I think uh, for people who are not in yoga, uh, like me before 10 years ago, uh, um, I think nature 
is the easiest tip for connecting uh, with God. It's very fast because uh, in nature uh, is pure, uh, pureness and uh, where we are just sitting uh, in uh, nature, that uh, pure environment, we are already connecting with God. But uh, of course, uh, uh, my opinion is that uh, the faster and um, the best uh, tip is meditation and mindfulness, of course. So there is so many mantra, bhakti yoga, karma yoga. And uh, in my country, we are usually called that chafe because my country is a crossroad uh, of uh, West and East. And uh, uh, we are usually say that uh, we are living by, uh, uh, by middle way, Buddha's middle way. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that uh, uh, life in the middle um, is the most important. There is no ego. There is no uh, so many ambitions. There is no uh, uh, fears. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, the easiest way to find a God and Thank connect uh, with, the with God. Thank you. Thank you. Lao Tse from China used to see, used to say, see in the nature, there is nobody in rush in the nature, but still thy work are done. And that's why probably all the masters got enlightenment when they reached to the nature. Can, can I add something, Vikram? Doctor? Hello? We lost doctor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he leave us. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, Amram Kubat from yes. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Okay. I, was, okay. I was just, if I can add something now, since you were yes, away. Yes. Yeah, I, was about I, 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 used, I used to say like this, when everything fails, follow the instructions, you know. <laughs> we have uh, fantastic, uh, great, great saints. Do we realize the greatness of great yogis who wrote Hatha Pradipika, Garanda Samhita, uh, you know, Patanjali, on and on, so many scriptures. We really need to follow them uh, to the letter. And you live in a holy land of Ujjain, where greatest founder of our tradition, Matsyendranath uh, yes, Samadhi yes. Shrine. We, we, will, we are getting his blessings. It is really alive. It is a place where to, you can go through catharsis when you apply yourself fully without any reservation, when your heart moves forward. But you cannot just do that mentally. If you do it mentally, you will go nowhere. Emotions, every, the whole being have to join. And it is guaranteed. I don't want to tell you because there are so many stories. We have no time for stories here, I heard. But so let's <laughs> see that it is. Motivation, and you will get it. It is there. It has been proven for thousands of years, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Krishnav Ji. Now, Amrita Ji, for a quick... Krishnav Ji mentioned that follow even instructions. Shastras are made to make you cross your fears. And intellectual understanding is a different ball game. Go for experiential learning. Emotional understanding of that experience is very important. Direct experience. Amrita Ji, quick tips on what should be done to realize the God within. Executionable, practical, one-one-liner tips, two tips. Well, I agree a little bit with Dr. Christoph um, in this sense of follow. There is one simple question. And uh, it's I very guess I'll to keep the mic off. It is echoing. Yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm just telling you. Hmm? Uh, so it's um, what we could do is um, ask a simple question that is uh, what would love do and uh, we all has, have references of people we admire like maybe it's a baba right the gurus the masters maybe it's a master maybe it's an archetype of uh, we haven't met but it's it lives it's inside of us so that inherent goodness is embodied in some someone it has a shape for us so then ask you what 
what would he do, she do? Then the answer is always inside of us because we are that inherent goodness inside. If you follow that, you can't go wrong. But you really need to follow up in that. Sometimes we get sneaky. Huh? We want the easy way out. So it's like, okay, we are good in these occasions, but in this occasion that suits me and because I'm, a, I'm in fear and I want to control something, then I'm not so, um, um, then I'm not honoring that inside. That mm -hmm. Then we get uh, in that path of a sneakiness of trying to miss, not miss out. Hmm? Uh, we may blend that and not follow that inherent truth that is inside of us. That truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Maybe one line suggestion from Igarji. Any quick tip? One liner. Meanwhile, pray to Igarji. pray to pray just to pray just to pray to God. Even if you don't know what, how, if you pray, He's always answering. He or she, I don't know. I just looked at. Screen and uh, said he or she. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amraji, one line on any other thing that you want to add? One line. Um, mantra. Mantra. Thank you very mantra. much. Chanting mantras. One liner, Pistopji. One line. God is at your fingertips. Just reach out and take it. <laughs> nice. Amrataji. It answers. It answers. The silence itself is the answer. Thank you. <laughs> so, dear friends, I am sure watching us from different parts of the world, we started our discussion on who is God, what is God, and where is God. Christophe G. said, God is such a Anand. It is an experience that has to be experienced through direct experience, not a matter of intellectual understanding only. And it is hard to express and when the, every cell of your body starts dancing, you realize that you are approaching closer to it. And Igarji added to what Christoph G said. He said that God is in every cell of the body. The kingdom of heaven belongs to us, inside us. And Amrita Ji also said that the inquiry should begin from who am I? And finally, you will reach that I am him. I am that. That is me. And the circle becomes complete. And Am Amraji mentioned that more and more people are going, getting away from the God. It is not actually they are going, getting away from the God. They are getting away from the concept of God, which is very narrowly defined by some fundamentalist or dogmatism. And that's why we don't want any ringmaster God. We want a God which we can relate to, providing us purpose of life and joy. For that, Amraji said, why don't you begin with nature? Nature itself is the biggest teacher and all of the greatest masters learn the lessons of their life from nature. She also said, start doing meditation, yoga. She said, go for a middle path. Less desires, less fears, less chaos, more peace. Then you'll have more time to go inside and chanting the mantras, which will help you to reach directly to your inner peace. Amrita ji mentioned that even if you are angry, upset and very sad right now, this is the trigger. You can enter into the spiritual realms at this point only because right now you are seeking for the deeper questions of your life. Be a spiritual scientist, spiritual experimenter. And finally, she said that when I inquired about myself, I realized that I am alive and I am life. And this is what I am. She said that for that to... Get into yourself. You may get for a master. Master you'll find outside. Even master you'll find inside also. And for that, no convenient path you need to take. Take a path which you're really working. It's not a matter of convenience. Igorji mentioned many points which he said, start with heartfulness, go for yoga, seek a master, go for meditation, and then he said, but before you do it, be open, be receptive, and be listen. Sharvadam mananam nididhyasanam. He said that God, the moment God is within you, will start asking questions. God outside will start replying. Start with prayers. And then our dear friend Christoph Ji, he said that God and spirituality is within. 
not without. And it has to be emotionally felt and understood by Sri Raman Maharshi's inquiry. He said, just sit for two hours and start doing that inquiry. And then you'll find that God is at your fingertip. And for that, he said, follow the scriptures. Shastras are also made to make us fearless. I'm sure, friends, now the concept of God will be more clearer, nearer than ever before by our honorable guests. Thank you very much for being with us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vikran. Thank you very Thank much. You. Hello, Dr. Vikran. Could we Hello. add one word, just one word? Yes, yes, my lord. Uh, trust. Trust. <laughs> We will we'll take it as the bottom line Just word. One, take one word right now. We need this a lot in this moment. <laughs> and Amrutaji also mentioned the importance of silence. Have trust and be in silence. Jesus once said, be still and know I'm your God. So be in silence and have faith. Thank you very much, Amrutaji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.